What is a scene? What is a scene? Wow, what a great question. Uh, I, I would say a scene is an encounter between a character and a circumstance in a prescribed moment in time. So character enters and encounters something and there's some change or exchange and then the scene ends. Um, yeah, I think a lot about, you know, Robert McKee talks about uh, energy and polarity changing in a scene. That ideally, you know, if you have a character who comes in the scene super happy, then it's a great opportunity for the character to leave the scene in a different state. Now that doesn't always happen. It doesn't always happen as mechanically as that. But I do feel like the notion of witnessing change is what scenes are supposed to be about. Uh, change, new information, something has to flip and, uh, and morph for the scene to be, uh, I think, most useful in moving a story ahead. Now that's not to say, I mean, certainly in, in the world of TV and film, we often have, uh, you know, clips of action or things that, things where, moments where uh, one might say nothing happens. You know, somebody's walking down the street or there's a, a pan of the sky or a bird goes by or whatever. And so we do have those sort of atmospheric things, but I think we are best, we are at our best as writers when we're motivating the story forward, where even, even in a small symbolic way, you know, things happen. Uh, I think of that scene um, in, uh, I think it's Tootsie, where, uh, which is one of my favorite movies, where Dustin Hoffman is walking by and, you know, there's the mime who's walking on the tightrope, which is what the movie's all about, and he pushes over the mime, you know, and it's about, you know, make a decision. It's about pushing himself to some other space. It's about, you know, getting off the ledge and, you know, making some sort of leap. Uh, and I think we can do that too in a symbolic way, but there is some change in that moment in time in that scene that makes that scene compelling. Does every scene have a beginning, middle, and an end? Yes, I think so, for sure. I mean, that's the way we sort of chart the movement of the scene. Even, even in the smallest scenes, there, there, are, there is a journey from, uh, from somewhere to someplace else. Uh, yeah, and sometimes that's verbal. Sometimes it's like, you know, I've come for the rent, and uh, I don't want to give you the rent. You have to, you know, here's a gun. Oh, here's the rent, or whatever. Or here's my gun. You know, there's some exchange in every scene, I think, the, 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 in the scenes where, that are most effective. Now, there are exceptions to that rule, but uh, I think we do well to have that in these scenes, like to, to motivate our story, to have change happen, uh, to feel like we're on a journey beginning, middle, and end, change, transformation, even incrementally, is essential. Aside from the Tootsie reference, is there a scene that is just always stands out to you as like one of the most perfect scenes? I know you said nothing's really perfect, but... Yeah, oh boy. Perfect scenes. Um, I, you know, <laughs> I, I, you know, not, not perfect. But I love, and I've seen so many times, I'm a huge fan of Grey's Anatomy and I've seen every episode. And I know a lot of people uh, have not seen every episode and have a different opinion of the show. But I love, there's a scene at the very beginning of the pilot that uh, where um, Meredith Grey is waking up after sleeping with Derek Shepard for the first time and she's trying to rush him along because she's like, I got to get to work. I can't be late on my first day, you know, and he's doing some observations about her house and stuff like that. And she's just like, I got to go, you know, and what's so great about that scene is it says so much about what's about to happen, you know, like he's in her way, which is going to be a thing that happens in the series for much of the series. You know, the fact that she's with him and the fact that she works in a hospital where she's gonna find out that he's 
one of her bosses, you know, is going to be this huge obstacle. And we don't know that at the time. It's just about a woman trying to get a guy out of her house so she can get to work on time. But it is about how he is inserted in her life and how that's a problem, you know. And so we get this microcosm of all of that stuff in that little scene that is sort of a throwaway if you're just watching it for the first time because you're like, okay, well, whatever. She just wants to get going. And it really is about uh, so much more than that. And I think that's really beautiful. Like, I think we can all do that in some sort of layered, symbolic way that says something about the characters and the world and the conflict uh, to come. What is your process for editing a scene? <laughs> My process for editing a scene is so... Uh, I think there's probably some logic to it, but it, it can feel really haphazard. You know, there are times when I go through a scene and I'm... I try to follow... I try to follow the argument, which is something that we talked a lot about when I was in acting school. You know, that is one of the things that I think actors want to do as they're doing a monologue or doing a, like, what's the, why am I saying this and why does this follow that and why does this come as a conclusion to this and, and what do I say in response to that and that's why I'm saying this. So I'm, I'm running through that in my head as I'm going through any scene. You know, it almost feels like a tennis match to me. Okay, she said this, so what's the response here? And there are times when I will do it, do that, put that down on the page in, in a sense of downloading, almost stream of consciousness, even though I'm, I've set up these circumstances so the characters are almost talking to each other. And then as I go back through, I may say, ooh, I don't really believe that moment anymore, or I don't know that she would say that, or that's not what this moment seems to be now. It seems like a bigger deal, or that there should be a pause, or less talking, or uh, something else. Uh, and, and my instinct sort of swoops in and says, well, let's scoop that out. Let's get rid of that, whatever it is, that joke, that comment, that, that piece of banter doesn't work here anymore because it seems like they're going more directly to this. And now that I'm revisiting the scene and coming back to this moment with these two people, I feel like I have a better, hopefully, a better idea of a more ideal version of their interaction. Uh, and so quite often the editing looks like that. It's just sort of me revisiting and going, oh, let's move this over here or, ooh, you know, almost talking to the character. Like, do you really want to say that? Does that, I don't know if that feels true to you, you know, and then, and then that line may disappear. Or, you know, you seem to be ramping up into something more here that I didn't translate before. So let's, uh, maybe there's more for you to say. You know, or maybe there's a, more of an elaboration here, or, um, and I certainly think that also happens too if I'm in a process where there's feedback, you know, because uh, other writers or other producers or, you know, people in a writing group or whatever may say, I don't really understand this about this scene. And then sometimes that scene becomes about at least partially clarifying what these characters mean what they're saying to each other, partly for the audience, but also for, for each other and for the scene. Um, so they may say something a little more pointedly, you know, or they may say something twice, or they may say something loudly, you know, and then the volume gets turned up or the shape seems to change. And I just try to follow those instincts of what the terrain of the scene is to get it a little more sculpted, a little more flowing than, you know, each time around.